Hey up troops, hey little Tanir again with another bit. No escaping this time. I think that was one of Deimos' death marks just flying past there. Hey, little Tanir again with another video, and this time we're going to look at Deimos, the new attacker for Year 9 Season 1. Is he the new Jackal? Is he the new Lion? The new Dockery? No, he's definitely just Deimos. He isn't replacing anyone's role, but he's a welcome addition to the attacker pool. It's going to save you that little bit of time when it comes to flushing out roamers from certain parts of different maps. He's a very good operator who probably fits into the sort of A, maybe B tier on the tier list. Probably A at the moment, I think, because... Defenders are panicking playing against him, but I think he will eventually settle in B, which is still very good and, like I say, a welcome addition to the pool. Let's get stuck into the usual way of doing these operator videos. We'll look at his loadout, we'll look at what the gadget does, and then we'll get into a bit more detail about how you can use the gadget on that sort of next level. That's enough waffling. I've had enough, you've had enough. Let's get stuck into it. Right, then let's get started with Deimos's loadout then, and he has access to the AK-74M, which is the same um, rifle that Nomad has. He also has the M590A1, which is the same shotgun to Smoke, Mute, Sledge, Thatcher, and Warden. And he also has the .44 Vendetta, which is a brand new gun to the game. And then as secondary gadgets, he has frags and hard breach charges. In terms of what you want to be using, I can see an argument for the shotgun in this instance because the revolver is that good at range. For me, I, I just don't like attacking with shotguns because you just don't know the range that you're going to have to take fights. When you're playing... Uh, defense you can shorten the range by like holding certain angles that benefit you if you're playing smoke and mute you can make sure you're you're at a certain angle or a certain range if you want to use the shotgun when you're on attack you don't de get to like dictate the fights as much therefore you can't always be sure a shotgun's going to be the right weapon to be to be carrying so i would still always use the ak-74m personally if you want to use the shotgun it makes complete sense because you've got the range on the 0.44 vendetta so the vendetta is essentially a magnum with a scope um, you can do a bit of customization to that. You can put a laser on there if you want to. You can see it appears there on the bottom of the ring. Um, and it's incredible. It does 78 damage. It goes through soft floors, soft walls, hatches. No, but you can make rotates with it. Um, there's a very, very little recoil at all. Even though the recoil pattern down here shows it as quite large, there's very little recoil whatsoever. And it's a very, very solid gun. I believe it will two-shot um, essentially any opponent. Um or three shots at one speed, depending on if you've got a Rook armor on or not. Um, when it comes to the scopes you can put on the AK, you can now put ACOGs on. You couldn't originally, but it's now changed. You can now put an ACOG on, and obviously any of the 1.5 or iron sights. The iron sights on the AK-74, I don't actually know what they look like. I don't think I've ever used them. Um, if I can spin it around, let's have a quick look. They don't look great with this. You've still got the sight mount there, even though you're using the iron sight. So, yeah, again... You can go ACOG or 1X. It's just complete um, preference for you, what you want to be using. I'm a red dot B main this season, I think. Um, but yeah, solid loadout. For me, I would use the AK-74M, obviously the Vendetta. And I'd probably take frags. The main reason you want to be taking frags, and we'll talk about it in the video, is if you've got a scan of someone and they're hiding behind like an anchor point, like let's just say half wall on border for easy maths, you can then throw the frag at half wall and you'll have to flush them out. Even though you know they're there, you don't have to push them. You can flush them out with a frag, which is a really helpful way of using his gadgets and his secondary gadget together. So what does Deimos do? So Deimos has access to the Deathmark drones. Now, the Deathmark drones are not an actual drone. They're just a mini helicopter that will go out and find enemies. Now, as you see in the top right-hand corner of the screen on the match header, you can see that you can see Deimos's logo. But the logo next to it is a question mark on the defensive side because we don't know who the defender is yet. The big thing to remember here is that you can only send a death mark out to find a defender once you've recognized them on the match header at the top. Now, you can do that by red pinging them with a drone like this. You can see that that's now appeared as Solis. Or if a defender was to run out and be seen, that would also show them as um, identified. So now that we've identified there's a Solis, we can now use the death mark drone. Now... If we've identified more than one opponent, let's say we've got three opponents identified in the top right-hand side, we can cycle between those opponents down in the bottom right-hand corner. You see it's got Solus's logo above the three Deathmark drone icons. Well, you've got the letter B there, which is what I use for changing your fire type. If we had, say, Bandit and Mute there as well, you'd be able to press B and you'd be able to find out which operator you wanted to go and hunt. We've only got Solus as an option here, obviously, so we'll just press the gadget button. You have to press and hold it. You can, like, if you let go of it before the ball is filled, it won't go all the way. But you can see what the death mark drone that looks like on the left there. Basically, just a little helicopter. Press and hold that the whole time. 
And that death mortar drone will go and find the operator that you've selected. Nice. There's Solus there. So let's just go and find what Solus looks like there on the ping. It's a live ping constantly. Even when Solus is moving around, it's a live ping. Now, I will swap over and show you what it looks like for defenders. But once you've got the death mark drone out, you now only have access to the Vendetta. You don't have access to the uh, um, the AK-74M or the shotgun. You can only use the Vendetta once that death mark drone is active. So we can swap back now. Let's send another death mark drone out to find Solus. Swaps to the pistol. And you can see there, the timer then in the bottom left starts ticking down. You can see where it is. You can see the defender that you want to go and find. By the way, Deimos whistles sometimes when he's on the hunt. Don't know if you heard it then. But you can see there, that's the ping that you're going to find. And you can see the death mark flying around Solus there, identifying it. Now that, like I say, will only be available to Deimos. The, you know if you jackal scan someone, your enemies can see the information. Sorry, your teammates can see the information. Well, only Deimos can see that ping. If we had other attackers stood here and here next to us, that information wouldn't be available for them. It's only available for Deimos. So we flip sides now. We're now controlling the Solis, and there is indeed a Deimos out in reception or lobby, whatever you want to call it here. He's about to come and scan us, so we're going to use the scan. On Deimos, can you scan please, mate? Oh, my gadget button's different on this computer, bear with me. Right, the death mark's going out. I am now hunted. So this is what it looks like for you. You can see you're hunted. However, you can also see a similar Deimos ping on the other side. Now, you'll see that that, li that ping isn't live like it is for Deimos. You see how it's like once every second? So Deimos gets a live ping. The defenders do get to see where Deimos is, but it says ping every one second rather than a live ping. Let's just do that one more time. Uh, wrong button again. We need to press the gadget button here. So Deimos sends it out. Obviously, you've got the big text at the top. You can say position reveal to Deimos. You can see this drone here. You can't shoot that drone, and your teammates can't shoot that drone. But remember, you do get that ping to let you know where Deimos is as well. So that's what it looks like from the defender point of view. Back onto Deimos then, and I feel like the one thing that I mentioned in the title that is going to separate good players from average players when it comes to Deimos is we've got Solis here. Not that it matters where she is on this occasion, but you can actually cancel the effects of the ping when you know where somebody is. So let's just say you know there's a Kavera on the other team. You identify Kavera on a drone. You can now use the gadget to find Kavera. You can get that live ping to find out where she is. Well, let's just say it's Solis in this instance. Then if you want to cancel that, you just press the gadget button again, and it cancels the death mark. So you can fight, you get that instant ping on where they are, and you can act on it. If you know they're upstairs, and you work well with the team, you can then have a member of your team cut off this stairs, a member of your team cut off white stairs, and both push up together. And then, of course, if you're not 100% sure, you can run another death mark. But being able to cancel that... Bear in mind that Deimos gives away his position as well as knowing the enemy's position. Yes, as we've just learned, the ping is not live like it is for Deimos. It's every second, but it still tells the enemy where Deimos is. So if you're pushing on your own and as Deimos, you're essentially in a 1v1. Yes, Deimos can pre-fire easier because the ping's live, etc., etc. But being able to ping this, find out where Solis is... Oh, there's Solus. Press the gadget button again, and it cancels the death mark. I think that's going to separate tremendous players from average Deimos players. Find the information of where they are. Work as a team to say, right, they're upstairs. You hold this staircase. You hold this staircase. Maybe someone go big tower in case she drops, makes a rotate, and, and goes through big tower into attic. Uh, sorry, through attic into big tower. I feel that that's going to separate Deimos players. So while we're here, I think we better look at what the .44 Vendetta can do in terms of destruction and... I mean, it's it's pretty potent. You can easily open hatches. If you want to make rotates, you can easily make rotates. The only thing is with the Vendetta when you make rotates is unless you shoot the wooden beam automatically through the wall, the wooden beam doesn't get destroyed. You have to then shoot the wooden beam like to make the rotate. So if you were to, you know, go like, like this, you can see that normally a shotgun would actually get rid of these wooden beams. So yes, you'd be able to make the rotate quite easily, but you still need to shoot those wooden beams out. Now you can do that through the wall if you know where the wooden beams are in the wall. Um, you can do that through the wall. I mean, as you can see, it's not the smoothest thing at making rotates. And I don't think you're probably going to make it rotate with it that often. However, 
making lines of sight with it is going to be super, super. You know, if you find out someone's in dining with this and you just make one line of sight, or you know, you're in, you find out someone's in showers, and you're in small tower. This should be easier to make lines of sight on this type of wall, you know, and you can. It's going to be so much easier to do that. Making rotates in this type of wall will be easier. You can see that we've basically made the same rotate shape that we need there. But we didn't shoot the wooden beams. So make sure you shoot those. Again, you, you might get lucky when you try to make a rotate that you shoot them through the wall. Or if you're absolutely insane, you could learn where the wooden beams are. So if we look at the... So the wooden beams fall in line roughly with where the, the lines are on the outside. So there should be a wooden beam here. Which there is. So whenever you're making a rotate with the with Deimos's pistol, look for these lines, and that'll roughly be where the wooden beams are if you want to get through. But I mean, how many times have we shot that wall? Not much. And look at the absolute destruction we've made with a sidearm, by the way. There's something else to mention about the .44 Vendetta is there is zero recoil. I'm gonna fire twice here. One, uh, I can't do that because I'm gonna have to do that in a new clip because I've only got four bullets left. I'll do that in a new clip. Be right back. And just like that, we're back. Um, look at the Hollywood skills we've just shown there. Incredible editing. So what I want to just show here is the recoil. Um, well, first clip, uh, first magazine or first revolver clip, whatever you want to call it, I'm not going to pull down. And then the second one, I will try and control it. So the first one. That's insane, isn't it? Let's do one more of that. That's, you know, it's not me pulling down whatsoever. That's just all the recoil. As imagine Kador... Um, in uh, Cade's revolver or the Doc's revolver doing that there. It would go bang, 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 bang. You'd be up here by the end of it. And then trying to control it. I, I ended up coming too far down there. Like, you really don't need to pull down. Wow, I'm still pulling it down too much. A little bit better. It's, it's not, you know, if you want to get it on... It becomes a bit of a science to learn. That bunch there is much better, but... You're not going to get it wrong, even at that distance, which, you know, in terms of siege, this is a fairly average, probably further gunfight than average, I would say. And even then, you're absolutely fine. The recoil is basically non-existent. So this is the situation I was talking about earlier on, and I'm going to have to try and do this with two PCs, but we've got a mute here behind half wall. We're going to do the Deimos death mark scan. We're going to find out where he is, and to flush him out of this area, we're going to throw a frag grenade. Now, bear in mind, I'm going to have to do the moving of mute on my other keyboard, so... Um, it's not going to be easy to do this because I'm doing two PCs at once, but this is what the idea is. We use a death mark. We know Mute is now behind this wall. We don't just want to take a one-on-one -on -one because he also knows where we are. So instead we throw a grenade behind there. He then has to step to the side. And we go, thanks very much. I've done that all in one. All in one go there with two keyboards and one mouse, but... You get the idea. The mute isn't going to sidestep out like that, but give me a chance. I, I didn't even feel like I hit him there. Give me a chance. I had to use the keyboard on my second hand, but you get what I mean. So I think frags are the option, really, because you're going to be able to flush people out of areas to save you taking that unfair... Well, not unfair, but you know, like the... You don't want to put yourself in any more of a situation where you're not sure you're going to win the fight. And by putting yourself in a 1v1 like that, it's it could be a 50-50. But you want to, like, stack the odds in your favor, throw a frag grenade, he's got to move or die to the frag, Location and you can just kill him as he exits from behind half wall, or whichever anchor point he says. So let's talk about Deimos counters, then. You can see I'm playing mute here. We've got a mute jammer on this lovely rug on border that I've never really noticed before. Lovely bit of ruggage. Um, so essentially, if you step into the effects of a mute jammer, where the range of a mute jammer is about 1.5 to 2 meters, you see in the bottom left corner when you step into the range of it, that mute jammer signal that's gone blue, um, well, when you're in the range of it, it will stop the Deimos track. However, if you step out of the range whilst the timer is still active, you'll start to get tracked again. So let's have a look. So step in the mute jammer. Oh, sorry, let me press the right. But I keep doing this. I've got the key binds different on the other PC. So we're being tracked. We're now being tracked. If we step into this, we're now no longer being tracked. We also can't see Deimos's position either. But if we step back out of it, the track continues. And then now we can see Deimos' position again. But we'll go back in, and the mute jammer prevents the, the, the track from happening whilst you're in the vicinity of it. In addition to that, if you're also stood in the range of the mute jammer whilst Deimos tries to start the track, he just gets an alert on his screen that says death mark tracking failed, or something along those lines. So you, whilst you're in the range of a mute jammer, the actual track can't start. So if you're worried about getting tracked at all, if you can stand in a mute jammer, brilliant. If you do start to get tracked, find yourself a mute jammer, it will prevent the track 
Although, like I say, whilst the track's already going on, if you step back out of the range of it, the track will carry on. But whilst you're in the range of the Mute Jammer, you're absolutely safe. The next counter is two, but out. Oh, there's, let's have a quick look at Deimos' player model, by the way. Let me uh, just come off the drone. And it looks so cool. Even in game, he looks you absolutely class. I can imagine that chasing you down in game in a game of ranked. <laughs> it's pretty scary. What's the... I forget how big the Your clip is on the AK. Um, so the next um, counter for Tuberau is... Uh, sorry, the next counter. Right, start again. The next counter for Deimos is Tuberau, who essentially works almost exactly the same as Mute. But bear in mind that Tuberau is canister of a timer as well. So um, let's get the uh, canister on the floor and then let's start the scan. Deimos just started the scan on the door, as you can see. We're now being tracked. And if we step inside the two brow freeze, the tracker goes away. But as soon as this ends, or if we step outside the range of it, the tracking continues. So it's exactly the same as mute. And we'll just wait for the timer to end here. We shouldn't be too long. Let's have another look at Deimos' sweet mask. I can't wait to see some people cosplay this at the events. It's going to be so cool. Um, so the next one, like we said before, is if you're standing in the effects of Mute or Tubrow, you won't get tracked either. So standing in the effects, and the exact same thing happens. You can't see because it's on the other PC, but it says death mark failed when you try to start the scan when you're in the effects of Tubrow's canister. So can, um, Mute and Tubrow work almost exactly the same way when it comes to countering Deimos. And last but by no means least, and it's nice to see this, Vigil got a buff in the way that he is now also a counter for Deimos. So, I don't know why I just ran outside to look at his ca character model again. We already did that. So, Deimos' death mark is going to go. It's in search of us. We're now being tracked by Deimos. This is how you die. Stick the gadget on. And now we're not being tracked by Deimos. Now, bear in mind, this will only last for as long as Vigil's cloaking device lasts for. Once the cloaking device ends, the track will carry on if there's still time left on the track. You can see the track just came back there. And also remember that it, as I, <laughs> let me start that again, all in one take though, we're not cutting that out of the video. As I try and start the track, if Vigil's gadget is active, Deimos can't start the track. So I just activated it, I'm trying to do the track now, and it won't work. So, all three counters work in a similar sort of way. When you're in the effects of a Mute Jammer or a Tuber out, or you've got the effects of Vigil's, um, ECR7 as it called, or Vigil's, um, cloaking device active, Deimos can't start the scan. If the scan does start, whilst you're outside the effects of those three things, go inside the effects of a Mute Jammer or a Tuberow Canister, or start Vigil's cloaking device, and it'll stop Deimos's gadget from working. Remember, though, only for the duration that you're in that device, or only for the duration that the Vigil cloaking device is on for. If the timer of the scan has still got time left when you come out of the effects, or when the, sc the cloaking device ends, you will carry on getting scanned. Cheers, Deimos. Oh, that would have been good, wouldn't it? We can't be far away there. Oh, we're miles, we're miles away. That's embarrassing. So there we have it. Deimos, who's been involved in the Lord of Rainbow Six for a long time now, is finally being added to the operator pool and with a very, very interesting gadget. I think he's going to be played quite a lot because, especially in solo queue and in team play, in team play is going to be insane because if you play with at least three other people, you can cut off the roamers wherever they are on the map. However, in solo queue, it also gives you the sort of fun 1v1 mini game within the actual round itself. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to play. As always, a massive thank you to you. Yes, you at home for watching the video. I really appreciate you getting involved. I can't thank you enough at the end of a video, but I always want to say thank you whether you've watched it, liked, subscribed, commented, and all the other stuff you can do on YouTube. Thank you very much for getting involved. I do want to give a massive shout out to the memberships who've recently gone up. I think there's been another five or six people who've joined the memberships recently. If you're in that, thank you very much. I really, really, really appreciate that as well. But I appreciate you just watching the video too. So thanks very much. I'll see you next time. Cheers.